Well, all right. So this is one I've been wanting to do for a while. This is the kind of long-term thoughts and, uh, and wrap up and review of my 2019 YT Capra CF Pro uh, in the 29 wheel size version. Um, I, I've been riding it for right at a year now. Um, I've done, what are we at, six, uh, five enduro races, one DH race on it. So six races total, um, had some really good um, placings on it. So my, my best times on some of the, uh, the enduro stages that I've, I've been racing on. Uh, and overall, I've been really, really enjoying it. But I uh, put close to 250 or so miles on it now. So I, I do feel like I know some of the, uh, the drawbacks and, and some of the, the things I don't like about it and some of the things I do love about it. Some of the things I changed and, and some of the stuff that, that uh, I would recommend, recommend getting rid of right off the bat. Um, so yeah, so let's dive right into it. I got some notes here that I can run through. Start with the uh, the bad, I guess, would probably be the, the easiest thing to do. Okay, so some notes on the, the bike, on the geometry. I've got it set up in the, the higher position, so not the, the low and slack position. With the 170 millimeters of travel and, and the uh, terrain around here, I wanted it to be a little bit more upright than, than what uh, the, the slack position gave. So I've got it set up, uh, again, it's an XL frame and it's got a 480 reach on here. I didn't change this stem, so that's the, uh, the stock link stem and then the stock 800 uh, millimeter wide bars. So 480 reach and 639 is the stack. And with the chip on the uh, lower link or, or the bolt in the, the setting on the high setting, it's set up with a 65 and a half degree head angle and that gives it an effective C-tube angle of 76 degrees. And I have noticed that it does climb pretty well, so I, I am happy with, with that. Um, that that number, it seems reasonable to me. It's not holding me back at all. Uh, and, I, and it still leaves me with enough weight over the rear wheel. Um, okay, so Mitchell, let's go over some of the, the downsides or the uh, things that I didn't like about it, and then we can move into the good and then kind of my overall um, wrap up and, and thoughts on it. Uh, first of all, the tire choice on this thing, it came with the E13 or the LG1 um, Enduro. This thing had a single ply tire on the back that got just absolutely thrashed in the first race. I don't know if you can see it here, but there are plugs all over the place in this thing. And it was a, my first race, race was super rocky on it, so I threw it to the wolves, but luckily I had, um, uh, tire inserts in there otherwise my entire day would have been done but one run in these tires were thrashed and for whatever reason they put a single ply tire in the back and then the reinforced one you can see here it kind of looks like the old school um, continental um, kind of brownish reinforcing in there this was still single ply but it does have a they call it this aramid reinforcing on the front i didn't have any trouble with the, the front but it really left a bad taste in my mouth um, so luckily for the race day, like I said, I was able to plug it up, but then I had some extra tires on me um, and I didn't have any issue with these, the, you know, the tried and true Mini and EXOs uh, in the front and then the aggressor EXOs in the rear. Um, I'm currently not running the tire inserts inside there just because I've been cruising around on my, my local trails. Um, but once I head back to the, uh, the O-Rock Enduro in Oklahoma next month in April, I'm going to have the, the inserts back in there to avoid uh, this problem again. So tires, trash. Um, also, not only did they, they get uh, uh, holes in the sidewalls, I could really, really feel the rolling resistance on, on those E13 tires. And I, I think that's been mentioned before, but they were just a slow rolling tire. So I, I didn't find any redeeming value in them whatsoever. So take that for what it's worth. Um, second big thing, uh, I actually cracked the rear wheel um, on one of the, uh, a big drop on the a downhill course up in Arkansas. Um, and to their credit, E13, no questions asked. They, I took a picture of it. They sent me out a brand new wheel and had a new wheel um, on the bike within two days before I, and it, you know, it took me another week before I could even box up and get the rear wheel back to them. So kudos to those guys. They stood behind their product. But the fact of the matter, uh, the fact of the matter is that it did crack on, on 
not a not a huge um, drop, stuff that I've hit many many times before, um, and, and I don't know if it was truly a workmanship error or, or something up, but but that was just kind of an oddball occurrence there. Um, what else? Oh, there was a slight bit of play in the uh, the DU bushing uh, area. Um, that was another warranty issue. It, it's fine now. Um, all I had to do was just get a hold of the, the YT guys and just tell them what it was and they overnighted me instead of the DU bushings. And luckily I have the press to, to pop them in and out. So I was back up and running uh, the next day. But that was just something to, uh, to, to note on there. And then uh, the only other, the only other um, mention I have is they didn't include any sealant with the, the, uh, the bike. Uh, I figured for you know five thousand plus that you could have the two tubes of sealant uh, inside there. They did come with nice E13 uh, valve stem, tubeless valve stems, which is great. But might be nickel and diming, but I'd like to have some some sealant either already in the tires or or the little stance um, or, or E13 branded uh, single size sealants. So that was it for the uh, the downsides. Now let's move on to the uh, the pluses and and what I really enjoyed about the bike. Okay, so what are the highlights of the 2019 Capra CF Pro? Um, the suspension is one of the big standouts for me. The, the rear suspension on here, the initial uh, stroke on the, the rear shock was smooth as silk. Um, this thing, you moved into the travel effortlessly uh, and it has a really good platform on it. So it, it still was able to, to support the, the rear end. Um, and allow you to, uh, to to maintain a lot of traction while climbing, but still have that kind of bottomless uh, feel whenever you started really launching off, popping off of rocks. And it, it was pretty playful with the uh, the X2 on there. I can't imagine what it would be like with a coil. Like I think that would be a full-on downhill bike. Um, and again, with the uh, the fork, the the grip two damper. The, uh, the biggest thing that I, I was able to, to feel right off the bat over the older Fit4, and, and again, this has been mentioned um, many times before, but that initial, um, you know, once you get about two inches in, it, it has a really good pedaling platform um, with the, uh, the the new damper, in, and I really um, have no um, complaints within the, uh, the suspension department on this bike. It, it's a smooth, um, effortless, bottomless 170 millimeter travel bike that pedals very efficiently. Um, during the assembly, um, all the bolt, or not during assembly, but after assembly and after a few rides, um, it, I was pleasantly surprised to find all the bolts um, were still torqued down to spec. I went through all the suspension bolts and everything stayed tied on there. So evidently YT did a good job of uh, putting assembly uh, lube and anti-seize and Loctite were needed on the, uh, the fasteners. That was really, really cool to see that nothing came loose after um, you know, the first 50, 60 miles, uh, which sometimes they, they do. Um, the finish on the bike, um, I got the, the matte finish with a couple of glossy spots on here. Um, it seems to be holding up really well. They've got a, a rubberized down tube protector on there, rubberized chain stay protectors, and then um, it's not as thick as the 3M, like clear bra, bra material, but it's on the, the down tube and along the, the tops of the seat stays and then wrapped underneath the seat stays. Um, so overall, the, the finish of the bike has been holding up very, very well. The only area where I, I have noticed um, a little bit of wear is, is right up here um, towards the head tube, this glossy section. I don't know if it's um, from rubbing against other bikes when shuttling, because I don't think my, my knees come up this far, but I can see a little bit of the the kind of scuffing right there, but that's it. Um, no big scratches or gouges from it, uh, like painted or powder coated bikes. So, so this thing seems to be pretty stout. Uh, and then the, the last thing is, is one of the details, um, and I'll show this when I kind of change the camera views, the, the cable routing is very well thought out and has little thoughtful little rubber grommets in here that are kind of cone shaped, so you can really wedge them down into the frame. Um, because as I mentioned before, I love a quiet bike. Um, so I don't like hearing all the, the chatter of the, the cables rattling around. Um, and YT has these really nice, tight, gripping little plastic cable holders. Uh, other brands do this, but they don't grip as nicely. Uh, and there's three of them on here, so you can um, really kind of get them in the right spot. So I don't hear anything from the cables um, clanking around 
between the, the actual holders and then the little rubber grommets. And every place that the, the cable goes in, or the housing goes into the frame, there's a grommet. Uh, so there's one over here, two over here, uh, and then the, the two down there um, for the, the rear brake and, and rear derailleur. Um, and then the YT is known for just the finishing kit. It's all, you know, there's, there's no house brand stuff anywhere on here. It's all um, high-end Fox and, and ODI grips on here and the Renthal bars and stem. Um, it, it's just a, a, the finishing kit on here is great. Um, the other thing was, so this is my first experience with code, the new um, code RSCs, uh, and these brakes are incredible. I was a, a pretty big XT, you know, just Shimano XT user, um, but, but these have me back looking at, at uh, you know, not worrying about SRAM anymore, and, and the power behind these things is incredible. Uh, and and the, the lever feel, uh, lever feel is, is great. I do love getting back to that SRAM modulation where they're less on and off like the Saints or the XTs or XTRs. Um, these have that really nice modulated feel, which, which is really cool to, to have again, uh, backed up by just buckets of power that I, that I can't trust enough. These things are, are great. Um, and I think that was it for my plus notes. So now let's just kind of go over the, the general thoughts on the bike and show you some of the details and, and some other little bits. Okay, here's a quick little overview just before I wrap up. Um, so you can see here, I went with uh, the Shimano XT trail pedals, just been flawless over the years. No need to, uh, to mess with success uh, there. I uh, saw the stock saddle on here. It seems to be working well enough for me. No, uh, no concerns there. Um, so you can see the really the only changes that I did make were to the minions as I mentioned and the aggressor in the rear uh, both EXO casings and I believe they are uh, 2.35 in the rear and then a 2.5 wide trail uh, in the front. Let me see if it's 2.3. Yeah, 2.35 um, It's weighing in right around 29 29.3 pounds um, And then up in the cockpit, I just added the togs thumb grips uh, which are great uh, these things really give you it's nice to give you an extra um, leverage point you can really you know wrap your bars your hands around like this uh, and and really get some extra leverage on there it's almost like a, a kind of a new style of bar end um, but I, I do really like those uh, and then the wahoo mount up there to keep tabs and everything and that is it that's really uh all i needed to do yt does such a good job with the finishing kit that there's not really much that needs to be changed all right, so that's what I think of the Capra. All right, so overall thoughts on the bike. Um, so if you can't tell, I, I do really uh, like the bike. I, I thoroughly have enjoyed it so far. Um, I think the, the, the pros by far outweigh the, uh, the cons that I've had. Um, and and the, uh, the issues that I did have, you know, the, the wheel and some of the bushing uh, concerns, the, the tires, uh, all that stuff easily fixed. Uh, well, except for the, the wheel, it's not easily fixed. Um, but E13 did a great job, uh, YT as well, they um, kind of liaisoned with, uh, for the, the warranty process between the two of them. Um, so they made it really easy for me, which was, which was great. So I had the wheel, like I said, just a couple days. Um, so it really wasn't that big of a, a hitch for me. So I wouldn't hesitate to, to recommend um, this particular bike as well as any of the other, the Capra line. Um, I think it's, it's a, uh, Still probably more bike than, than what I need for around here, but it is, since I don't have a downhill bike, um, I've kind of got a two bike stable with my cross country bike and then my more aggressive Enduro, um, you know, big travel bike. Um, but yeah, so I've, I've really enjoyed it. Um, it's got a lot of cool um, standout features, a killer build spec, um, progressive geometry. Uh, it, it's a really fun bike to ride, and uh, I, I feel like that it's um, made me a better rider, and uh, hopefully I, I can continue to excel on it and uh, continue to see uh, improvements throughout the rest of the race season. So yeah, that, that pretty much wraps it up. It's a uh, killer bike at a killer price, uh, killer spec, and killer suspension. There's really not much more uh, to be said about it. I, I really have enjoyed it. Um, so I believe this is where I tell you to smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. I'm just kidding. See you later.